one-way MANOVA, um, it's used to model two or more dependent variables that are continuous with one or more categorical predictor variables. And, and that comes from our colleagues over at UCLA. Um, it's, in a sense, it's very similar to the ANOVA, where we actually have multiple groups and we're measuring a single dependent outcome. And we could be measuring against uh, three, four, five, or six groups all in the same outcome to see if there's any differences. With the one-way MANOVA, we in essence have, we can use those three, four, or five groups, and we're actually measuring two dependent variables. And the reason or the logic behind doing a MANOVA is similar to um, the ANOVA coming from the t-test, which is really our original test of means. With the t-test, we've got two groups and one outcome. But if we want to have three, four, or five groups with one outcome, we would not want to repeat the t-test over and over again, because for each t-test, we've got a 5% level of precision. So we could go from 5 to 10 to 15 to 20% level of precision to a point where it actually is not precise anymore. So instead of doing multiple t-tests, we just go ahead and do an ANOVA, which is a single test, and that gives us our, that maintains our 5% level of precision. The MANOVA is the same. Instead of doing multiple ANOVAs, where we would do, say, you know, two separate ANOVAs, our level of precision would increase to 10% over from the 5. So instead, we just do a MANOVA, which maintains our 5% level of precision. So that's the logic behind the MANOVA. It's essentially a t-test, which has been um, multiplied onto itself into a single, you know, a single statistical test. Um, from the from the Laird statistical group, you know, they describe it as the one-way multivariate analysis of variance um, used to determine whether there are any differences between independent groups on more than one continuous dependent variable, which is you know somewhat similar. And lastly, we've got a MANOVA has two or more independent variables and two or more dependent variables, which seems pretty straightforward. Here's some examples where, you know, it would be appropriate to use a one-way MANOVA. You know, so we've got a researcher who wants to know if ethnic background is a predictor of years of schooling and also GPA. So we've got our, um, our groups, which are ethnic background, and you could have three, four, five, six, you know, different ethnicities that you're um, looking into. And then our continuous dependent variables, we've got years of schooling and also GPA. So we've got two separate dependent variables, both on a scale. Our, our next example would be a researcher who wants to know if high school graduation status is a predictor of glucose level and blood pressure. So <clears throat> with high school graduation status, you could have graduate, non-graduate. We could also have um, a graduate diploma, which is um, different the uh, graduate equivalent exam. So we would have our three groups, and then we're taking a look at glucose level and also blood pressure, our two scale dependent variables. Um, and lastly, we could look at a researcher wants to know disease status is a predictor of stress and happiness. So disease status meaning that someone may have the disease and someone may not have the disease. And then we're looking at our, our measures of stress and also of happiness, which would be um, two continuous or we could do it on a Likert or a Likert scale and, and uh, determine see if there's a relationship between disease status. So those are just a couple of examples, uh, just a few examples there. The statistical assumptions for one-way NOVA are actually um, quite extensive. And some of them are, are really quite obvious, but the others are not so obvious. Um, it's really beyond the scope of today's session to go into the great details about how to actually check the assumptions. But just to go through them uh, real quickly, so we start off with we have two or more dependent variables, which we've you know already spoken about to be measured at the interval or ratio level. We've got um, our independent variable should consist of two or more categorical independent groups, just like we had ethnicity or disease status. Um, you almost always want to have an independence of observations um, when we have uh, a test of means, so there's no relationship between the um, observations, unless, of course, we're doing something that's repeated or, or paired. I also want to have, for MANOVA, you want to make sure that you have an adequate sample size, and this is very important. When you have a small sample size, the confidence intervals tend to be quite large, but by increasing your sample size, the uh, confidence intervals, which is really a, um, the population estimate, um, becomes much more narrow and begins to truly reflect 
the true population estimate. And so it's important to have an adequate sample size for MANOVA. And of course, if you ever need to calculate out sample size, then um, we often recommend the use of uh, GPower software. And we have a number of, of tutorials on how to use GPower software. Um, and then we get into the, the outliers. And for MANOVA, just like we have with other tests and means tests, we want to make sure that we don't have any outliers, you know, you know, univariate or multivariate outliers. Outliers can truly skew your data. Even though outliers are probably the most interesting data points in your data set, having outliers can actually skew your data uh, substantially. So it's good to identify your outliers and then maybe remove them from the calculations um, for at least one calculation and then put them back and see how it actually affects your calculations. We also look for uh, multivariate normality. Um, that's a reflection of uh, the MANOVA being a parametric test, and you want to make sure we all things are um, are parametrically or, or normally distributed. Um, we're also looking for that linear relationship between each pair of the dependent variables for each group of the independent variables, and, and that can be checked with with scatter plots. Um, and of course, we're also looking for the homogeneity of variance covariance matrices. So. Um, the variance and covariance matrices, that's a little bit complicated to actually um, to test, but but I would recommend some of the, um, the textbooks. And, and Andy Fields got a pretty good section in his book regarding variance covariance matrices. Um, and lastly, we want to make sure there's just no multicollinearity. Now, multicollinearity is, is often spoke about in multiple linear regression, um, where you actually have variables that are somewhat related to each other. Um, and it's the same for the MANOVA as well, too. When you have variables that are related to each other closely, um, in essence, you're just doubling up on a single variable. And, and so if, they're multi if, they're, uh, if there's multicollinearity, then you're just, it's just going to show, it'll probably show being a non-statistically significant result. So.